Before I begin, if you just want to see the installation of the filters on the water system, you can skip ahead. I'll put a time down at the bottom. But for the first part of this video, I wanted to quickly talk about the filters I bought, why I bought them, the system I'm going to set up, how much everything costs, all the fittings you're going to need, and why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. So we just bought a new house and we have a well and we live here in Michigan and we get really good water pressure but we also have iron in our water and arsenic in our water. We had a test when we bought the house and they said we had 20 parts per billion of arsenic. Now this system will not get rid of the arsenic. The only way to get rid of arsenic is with a reverse osmosis system and we're going to be installing two of those on sinks right under the sink upstairs. This is purely to get rid of sediment and minerals and hopefully iron that's in the water so all of that isn't slammed into the reverse osmosis filter system which is a series of filters and that doesn't clog up. This is going to filter everything in the house except the sprinkler system and the spigots on the outside. There's a bypass on the plumbing right over here. This is going to intercept all the other water and it's going to intercept it before it gets to the water softener. So before I bought anything, I did tons of research. I would watch videos and pictures and read about it, and I saw people had done one filter or they had three filters with the same filter cartridge in it. I saw filters that had been uh, plumbed in parallel so you didn't lose pressure. And this is just the system that I came up with. It makes the most sense to me. And what I've come up with is a series of four filters, and each of them with a smaller micron size opening. So the way it's going to work is like all other systems, I'm going to tap off the existing line, run through the filters, and tap back in. I will have valves to isolate it and pressure gauges to monitor the pressure coming in and out. And before I keep going, everything I bought here I got on Amazon, and I'll put links down in the description with what I bought, the cost, and the quantity, and the quantity I'm going to actually use. Because some of these I bought a pack of 10 and I'm only using 4 but I'll put all links and the cost for everything down in the description. But for the filters themselves, these are the first two that I purchased. And this one is a 100 micron filter, and this one is a 50 micron filter. I know they look the same, but they have smaller um, openings in the, the fabric itself. And the fabric, when I say fabric, these are actually turn down filters or spin down filters. You're not actually changing the filter. It's kind of like the screen on your screen window where it's just going to catch the particles. When this gets clogged, all you have to do is open the valve. All of that will get washed out and close the valve. And I really like that idea that I'll never have to change a filter on either of these two. So these are going to catch the big particles that come in the house first. Now the next two that I bought, um, I was almost going to buy, there's a real popular one. It's blue from DuPont. It was quite cheap. There's a billion people that bought it on Amazon. But I went with these because they're clear and I wanted to be able to see the filter. I wanted to be able to see if it was clogged with iron. I'm going to have pressure gauges but I wanted to see how clogged it was. Immediately look at it and say, oh man, I got to change that filter. So I went with these. They're from Culligan. This is the filter casing. This isn't the actual filter. The filter gets screwed, uh, placed inside of here. And these are from Culligan. They're uh, on Amazon. They're one of the most popular ones on there. It seems super well built. It, looking at the picture, I didn't realize how large it was, but these are really big. They take a 10 inch by 4 inch circular filter cartridge um, that looks like this. And the cool thing about this is I bought two exactly the same, but I have in these I have a 100 micron, 50 micron. I'm going to put a 25 micron in here and a 5 micron in here. If it starts to get clogged up or I lose pressure, I might change this from a 5 to a 10 or a 15. And that is an issue with this, is that as it is now, water's running straight up through the house. And we're going to be putting it through bends and pipes and valves and gauges and filters. And we're going to lose some pressure, hopefully not a lot. Like I said, I live in Michigan. We have plenty of water. Now, it is estimated that each of these bends and fittings and tees, you might lose a half a PSI. And I think maybe each time it goes through one of these filters, I might lose up to 5 PSI. So if I have 50 coming out of that pump, by the time it goes through here, it might be down to 30. I'm hoping not. And by the time it goes upstairs, it might be 20. I hope not also. The next point is I was originally going to use solid copper pipe. 
and use solder and hook it all up. But I decided to go with PEX piping, which is right here. One downside with the PEX piping is the inside diameter. It's slightly smaller. This is all three quarter inch pipe and three quarter inch is what I have back there. But the inside diameter of PEX piping is a little smaller with the system I'm going with. You can expand the PEX and that's one method of crimping it on. But with all these different fittings, these are actually smaller than a three quarter inch and a three quarter inch with a copper. A copper fitting fits over the three quarter inch pipe. These are going on the inside of the three quarter inch PEX piping. So we might lose some pressure by the time it goes through the whole system and upstairs. I'm hoping it's not a lot, but it's something I'll have to look out for. Now I went with the cheapest one, which is this here. And this tool actually works for half inch or three quarter inch. And it kind of works like, you know, a hose clamp where you put it on a, a tube and you use a screwdriver and you can tighten the hose. It kind of works in the same way where there's an inner ring and an outer ring and you're compressing that outer ring. You're just kind of pinching it together. It was only 30 bucks, 30 bucks. These were each, each of these filter casings were 52. And I think these were each 52 as well. This whole system uh, was right around $400, which seems like a lot, but you could just go with one filter and it would be half the cost. But the main cost was in these filter systems. Um, again, with PEX piping, the cost is a little bit more expensive than a normal copper tee, but these weren't too much. I think these were a buck fifty. Um, I am going to use a shark bite fitting where I'm connecting to the existing system. These were five or six bucks. These are the expensive ones. You definitely don't want to use the shark bike fittings all the time. Just one or two in certain scenarios where you can't weld it or you don't want to weld it. Now, like I said, I did a ton of research and I drew the system out maybe 10 times. And it helped me to visualize how I wanted to do this um, because when I started, I didn't really understand the, the actual flow of how it was going to go. I know if you've done this before, it probably makes sense. But like I said, it's going to leave the existing pipe. I'm going to cut. It's going to come into this uh, shark bite fitting. From here, I want to install a T, which will go to a, a butterfly valve where I can isolate this system. So there's actually, actually about three butterfly valves. Two where I can shut off the incoming and outgoing flow of the system and one for the bypass. So if I ever want to change a filter, I will close the filter system valves, open the bypass, and the water will go straight through and straight out. But for most of the time, I'll close the bypass and it will run through the system. Now the way this is going to go, I'm going to take this piece of plywood I have right here, I'm going to mount it to the wall, I'm going to fit everything on here that I need, and I'll make the final connection to my water system where I actually have to cut the pipe on somewhere like a Saturday or a Sunday where I know I have plenty of time because there's going to be um, no water to the house for a little bit while I make this connection. But when you're doing this, before you uh, start laying it out, you have to decide where this is going to go and you do want it open and easy and accessible to get to. So that's why I'm putting it on that big wall and not tucking it behind somewhere where I won't be able to get to it or I won't be able to access it.
this is the point where I'm connecting. I'm going to be connecting into this pipe here. So I just set up my uh, laser level to shine a line on the wall just so I can get a rough estimate of where this is going to be because I want this one in line pretty close. The other one is going to come up, drop down, and then go over and connect here. But this one I kind of want to keep in line. Well, I screwed up. I figure it's a better idea to put some of these fittings on here now, and I definitely have to put this fitting on first. I can't mount this, screw this in, because I have to spin this to rotate it on. So I'll have to mount both of these uh, simultaneously but I might as well do the ends too. The crescent wrench doesn't fit. <laughs> 